Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Logic Live. Hey, Valentine. Hello, Renee. Jeff, how's the levels? Oh, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. I'm trying this week. Uh, I think I've, I've, ama- I've managed to um, take this to a new level of multimedia complication that uh, before which I never thought was possible. So I'm looking forward to uh, those epic fails. Aloha, Miriam. Hey, Shiver, how are you, man? Kirk Baldwin is in the house? Oh, it's so nice to see everybody. Hello, Sibyl. And Keith is here. This is great. Hello, Moore. Welcome, welcome, welcome. $5 says Andy nails the music dissolve this week. All right, excellent. Challenge accepted. I did the only responsible thing, Randy. Um, I uh, rewired uh, basically everything in here and uh, didn't test it thoroughly before, before today's show. So I'm ready, I'm ready to impress. Let's see how I can possibly screw this up. Stand by for a cable jam. <laughs> hey, Manoj. And Naveen is here. Sending a wave to Naveen. My rudimentary countdown here on the stream deck. We've got another 15 seconds left on this uh, on this music. Very excited. All right, here we go. Hey, all right. So, uh, Randy, how was that? Did anybody take any takers? Top notch. Thanks, dude. I'm trying up my game as always, always, always. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Logic Live. Thank you very much for joining us today. Let's get rocking and rolling. I'm going to do this dissolve again here. And uh, let's do this and spotlight that for everyone. This is episode 42. It's the Super Bowl show. Happy Super Bowl day, everybody. At least we can all agree on that holiday, right? This episode of Logic Live is brought to you by Cinesis.io, solutions development integration and support supporting flame artists since 1997. We love these guys. As you've heard me say before, they're my own personal reseller. We could not do our jobs at Lively without them. And uh, they've been great friends to the flame and logic community. So uh, if you have any questions at all about their remote workflow solutions, you can check them out at cynicis.io. And as we announced a couple weeks ago, uh, we're now on Patreon. Uh, everybody had asked how they could possibly help to support everything that Randy and I are doing, and uh, and they've answered the call. So I wanted to thank everybody. Uh, we've got three different tiers of of uh, of uh, sponsorship or uh, patronage, I guess it would be, uh, on Patreon uh, with some great little uh, uh, extras and some swag and some discounts for for you guys uh, for supporting what we're doing here at Logic.tv and Logic Live and on the forum. So thank you uh, to all of our patrons. Uh, we really appreciate it. It's just it's just wonderful. And uh, Randy and I have some great things planned uh, for the future, and we could not do this without your help. So thank you very much to all of our patrons. And if you'd like to sponsor, check it out at Patreon, patreon.com slash Logic TV. And uh, another new exciting thing we were able to, uh, to get for uh, friends at Logic.tv and Logic Live is a, a great discount from Boris FX. These guys, as you know, make the greatest plugins in the world. We've had them on the show before. You can save 15% on any Boris FX product, standalone or subscription, when you use the code Logic-15 at checkout. So if you, uh, if you are planning on picking up anything from Boris, please use that at checkout, and uh, you're going to support Logic Live um, at the same time. So thanks to Boris for that. Last week, we had Render Dome 1, the Battle of the Andes. I want to thank everybody who uh, tuned in. It was an absolutely fantastic time. Andy, uh, me versus Andy Dill, and uh, I, I just loved it. So if you haven't had a chance to, to check out what a, live, uh, what a live Iron Chef kind of flame battle would be like, uh, head on over to the uh, Logic Live the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Logic Live and check out the replay of Render Dome 1. It was really great. I want to thank Randy and Amanda for hosting, Brian Fox over at Boris for uh, for doing all the technical directing, and uh, it was great. It was just awesome, and we're really looking forward to uh, Render Dome 2. So if anybody out there would like to be a part of the Render Dome, please shoot me an email or a message on the forum, and uh, we'll try to make Render Dome 2 a reality as soon as we possibly can. So thanks everybody for that. And let's bring me back here. Hey, there we go. Uh, we have a great show today uh, here at Logic Live. This is gonna be the Super Bowl show. Uh, we've all worked 
for him. He's many of us have worked on Super Bowl spots. We all have amazing stories. Sometimes they go like way beyond, you know, the just like the, the nuts and bolts of making the spot. There's really nothing like it, you know, uh, the immediacy. Uh, my friends who work in film uh, and episodic, you know, ask how is being a flame artist for the like commercial world different? And for me, it's just the immediacy, the pressure, the time pressures. Um, and there's really like that's taken to a whole new level when you get to, to Super Bowl spots. So we're going to show off some stuff we've done in the past and uh, and just kind of share some fun stories. Um, so I wanted to ask all my guests to turn their cameras on and turn their mics on. We have a lovely panel <laughs> joining us today. Uh, hold on, let me set this to uh, gallery view so I can see all your beautiful faces. We have in no particular order because everybody has a different order on their screen. Uh, we've got Tim Farrell from Lost Planet in New York. Say hello, Tim. How you doing, everybody? Good to see you. Welcome back. Uh, we've got Sean Cochran from The Vanity. Hello, everyone. Hey. hey, hey. Uh, Mark Wellington from CMG. Hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining us, Mark. And Andy Brown from Jogger in LA. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and last but not least, we have the lovely and talented Randy McEntee, who is uh, a, a very, it's, this is fascinating for you all. Randy is a working flame artist. He's working right now, as a matter of fact, and may at any moment get peeled away uh, to deal with uh, an ad emergency. So we, you, we you mispronounced you, fl you mispronounced lame, Andy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will work on it. Uh... Did, did these work? Oh, oh yeah. You can keep... yes, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Randy, for there pointing out. My thoughts. Um, so yes, Randy's here and Randy, uh, we're, Stick with us as long as you can, and then uh, when you have to go back and answer the beck and call, go for it. Um, so yeah, so welcome everybody. Thanks again for coming on, and uh, let's just get right underway. I want to share a Super Bowl spot I worked on. I, I want to say it was about four years ago uh, for GNC Vitamins. Let me show you the spot, and then or GNC Vitamin Stores, and then I'll tell you the uh, the sordid tale behind it here. So I'm gonna uh, now. This is where we get into um, multimedia. Uh, mass, you know, madness here, where I really miss uh, Brian Fox. Okay, here we go. Don't ever let anyone tell you you can't change. That is what life is, change. It's not some magic trick, it's your will. Your thoughts become your words, become your actions, become your reality. Change is your destiny. Now go chase it. There we go. Uh, and fun fact about this, right? This was, uh, thank you very much, Randy. Thank you, in fact, let me give myself a round of applause there uh, and my whole team at Lively. Um, this spot, uh, look at this, I'm trying to scroll. <laughs> Okay, uh, I was trying to scroll the, Never mind. you can see. Uh, uh, this spot here was banned from the Super Bowl. Uh, and that's what kind of gave it a little bit of, uh, of notoriety. It's a great spot, it's a beautiful message and everything. Um, but I don't know, I guess we were a, a week into production here or into post-production when um, the NFL announced that even though uh, Fox Sports had taken the $5 million from GNC, to air this spot, uh, GNC stores sell supplements that NFL players are prohibited from taking. And so the spot was banned from the Super Bowl, which made it a social media, like, you know, superstar for five minutes, which was great. Um, I mean, as far as like visual effects, there were a bunch of little cleanups that we had to do, but this shot right here was, uh, was my big task. Other than like managing the clients, managing the conform, managing all the changes and the cut changes that happened over the course of post, what they told us or what we bid on in the board was uh, they needed to do a forest fire. And believe it or not, even in, in America, they are not allowed to set a forest on fire for uh, the sake of a, of a vitamin commercial, even one you know, for the, the Super Bowl. So what they were able to do though is kind of build uh, a line of prop trees in front of um, in front of uh, an actual forest, I guess. So do I have here? Yeah. So if you can kind of see here, uh, there was you know a tree line in the background. There were real trees. Then the props department brought out all these trees, and they're all in sandbags, right? 
And then they lit some of these on fire and there was a lovely light, the production light in the back here that had to be removed. But the task was really to take this and just elevate it to the point where it looked like there was a much bigger fire than there was. And uh, we went back and forth with the agency uh, a lot. The only thing I had to use for elements was um, they just kind of let the camera roll. You know, once they lit this stuff on fire, it was going to burn. So uh, they got their performance with the firefighters in the foreground and then everybody cleared frame. Um, they managed to, of course, not put the camera on a tripod. So I got I had the lovely up, you know, time of stabilizing this um, as they want to do. But I was just taking bits of burning trees uh, and burning leaves from different parts of the shot, cutting them out, um, doing some rough roto and then just like screening them or adding them on top. Um, and then blending and everything where, where it seemed appropriate. And we went back and forth on like, you know, the, I, I want to say, I don't, I couldn't find my first render. My first render was like an inferno, like, you know, the, like the end of Bambi, like that level of, of like burning. And that was too much. So they dialed it back a bit and this is kind of where we ended up here. Um, but yeah, that's my, that's my big Super Bowl story. Uh, I'd say that the I probably spent like two weeks on it from start to finish. And again, most of that time was spent kind of managing the client and managing the crazy uh, or the craziness that is, you know, inherent in doing a Super Bowl spot. But it was just a lot of back and forth and a lot of changes and uh, and then a lot of versions ultimately for social and all that kind of stuff. So that's my story. Um, if anybody has any questions, please go ahead and put them in the chat. Just make sure you set the chat to uh, all panelists and attendees. Uh, or you can throw them in the Q&A panel and we'll keep an eye on those and make sure everybody gets the questions answered. Um, does anybody have any questions for me on this amazing uh, bit of uh, flamery that was done? How much time do you spend on it, Andy? I'd say like it was the, the whole thing was probably about two weeks from start to flood from like the first like conforms I did on the raw files before they did their color grade. Uh, and then... Um, I'd say the actual comp, like I probably spent a total of like 30 hours on it or something like that. And a lot of it was, it was, it was R and D once I got the first bit of it done, then it was a matter of, you know, making them changes, uh, or making changes for them based on their feedback. Yeah. Quinn, it was about, I would say it was about 30 hours, you know, something like that. Um, fortunately, like I didn't know what to expect, you know, and I was worried I was going to have to use like either particles or kind of some kind of stock fire elements or CG or, or whatever. But as it turns out, they shot enough. Uh, and you know, what was it, what was, what was I think much bigger in the boards ended up only being like you saw on the spot, like two seconds or something like that. So it worked and, out. And it uh, never aired Andy. No, 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 it never aired. Uh, at least not oh. during the Super Bowl. It might've aired after that. Um, and then it had its like so social. Upset. What's that? You must've just been so upset. It was like a letdown. It was definitely a letdown because, you know, it's the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? But uh, at least we were able to, like, before the game, play up the controversy. Like, we were able to, like, post for our clients something that said, uh, you know, our, our friends or clients, hey, if you want to see the spot that was banned from airing during the Super Bowl, you know, here. And meanwhile, it's all about people with disabilities who are, like, have overcome adversity, you know? And the whole controversy was that, GNC sells something that NFL player, I mean, Budweiser sells beer. I don't know that they're allowed to play drunk. I mean, they, maybe they can, but uh, so that at least it did get its social media play, even if it didn't get seen during the game. Um, my mom told everybody she saw it during the game, I'm sure, because that's what she does. Uh, and delivery, it was, it, was, uh, it was delivered in HD. Yeah, I finished it in 4K, but it was delivered in HD. All right. Excellent. 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 So next, next up, if anybody has any questions, throw them in there and, and I'll definitely get to them. But next up, we're going to go with, uh, with our good friend, Tim Farrell. Let's give Tim Farrell a round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. And uh, when I put the call out for, uh, for you know, content, if anybody wanted to come on and show off uh, something that they had done for the Super Bowl, Tim sent me an email that was awesome. It was absolutely something I wasn't expecting. So Tim, do you want to uh, do you want to introduce the clip like like well, we sure. doing tonight, Joe? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a couple of spots for a company called Johnson Controls, and we made these in early 1984, uh, specifically for the Super Bowl in '85. 
you know, you say how rushed everything was. We finished this thing over six months before the Super Bowl. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's kind of funny that way. So anyway, now this, you know, I've done a lot of Super Bowl spots. I've, I've had a bunch in even, even in the last few years, and I have one on, is today the Super Bowl? Oh, yeah. yeah I, I have one on today. Um, but these, of course, were my first. So <clears throat> none of the spots I've ever done are been particularly remarkable or VXF heavy, but you know, I'm always proud to, you know, it's a Super Bowl, so you're always proud to have one. So these were made using the first generation of paint box, and we use that from Matt Roto. And then we used the first generation of ADO, and it was composited on one inch videotape with a Grass Valley 300 switcher. And, you know, much like you sometimes look back on an old snapshot that when you took it, it was just a snapshot but with 35 years hindsight, you see some really interesting things in it. These, <laughs> these spots actually, they, they kind of embrace the zeitgeist of where uh, video effects were um, in 1984. So let's take a look at the first one. It's called Lax. Seamless transition here. Tillis Airport wanted automated energy management and fire alarm systems. Johnson Controls did it. When St. John's Hospital, Gloria Marshalls, and Nichols State University wanted to control their heating and cooling maintenance costs, Johnson Controls did it. You know how they all paid for it? Out of energy savings. We're at work in over 500 cities around the world, creating a better climate for business. Give us a call. All right. So, you know, we all. So we all like to look back on these things and have a couple of laughs, but there's a there's a couple of really serious innovations going on here. <clears throat> and to be clear, I don't mean this particular spot was a breakthrough spot but it incorporated a whole bunch of very recent breakthroughs in the technology in the video business. So the ADO was the first device that you could take, uh, take an analog image and let me start this over. ADO was the first device that used two separate mechanisms of digital technology um, and combined them into one unit. The first was the digital technology to take an analog image, convert that image into pixels, manipulate them, and then spit them back out so we could record them or see them. And then the second was taking digital technology to control our devices. And so this took both of those and put them into one device. What, <clears throat> what we could do is we could then manipulate that image in, in 3D space, which was you know, the space they developed for it, um, as well as make it constantly repeatable. Um, and where we see this today is actually in the axis and image of our action. That's what an ADO was. It was that exact same axis, X, Y, Z, uh, rotates. Um, we had a perspective thing so we could adjust the field of view. And all of that is actually, here you go, there's one. And all of that is actually still incorporated into the very axis that we use now. And it's, it's pretty much unchanged. Um, and then, the paint box was another huge breakthrough. The ability to load an image, paint on it, and then record it back to tape. This, this was huge. Um, and that paint box is the infant child of the system we use today. So, you know, what are kind of were our hopes and dreams for this sort of technology for the future? Well, for one thing, the ADO didn't even have a Mac input at the time. And so we were fortunate that we had two of them. And what we would do is we would patch, we would, we would load the the fill into one and the mat into the other and patch the mat one into the external thing of the keyer of the switcher so that we could move both the mat and the fill at the same time. That was huge. That was like <laughs> unheard of at the time to be able to do that. Um, and then what we looked forward to was being able to have an actual mat input. We were looking forward to having a combiner where we could take the two images and manipulate them together in 3D space so that they would inter interact with each other, they would intersect, stuff like that. And we also looked forward to being able to soften the image, to add a little bit of blur. If you notice on those shadow passes, it's just, you know, it's just a mat. You know, we couldn't even put any softness on anything. 
So, <clears throat> and then of course our big hope and dream for the paint box is that all those frames we painted on, we would be able to quickly see them back in real time, rather than have to wait to output them one at a time to one each tape. And all of course those things came true in, 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 in much more so in the future. Hey, so Tim, when you um, when you operated the paint box, did you also wear um, uh, like blouses with? Uh, I, I with have that pads? same shirt on today. Oh, wonderful! Excuse me, I don't have it on. I do have that same shirt today. Absolutely. It's at the cleaners, is what you're saying? Yes. Uh, no, it's in the closet. It's in the closet. Ah, yeah. read into that, shall we? There you go. Yeah. So, so that's where the bad posture started from. <laughs> well, look how heavy that pen must have been. You know, the pen wasn't so much the issue, it was the size of the tablet. The radiation is what it was. You know, well, it's, you were constantly reaching so far. And the first time I went down to a little tablet, I thought, oh, you know, this is going to be silly. And yet it was very co comfortable. And then one day I had to go from a little tablet back to a big one. And within the, by the end of the day, my elbow was screaming <laughs> in pain. It was remarkable how bad that giant tablet was. For yeah. Me. So I anyway, the first place I worked at had those. It was like yeah, yeah, and and the uh, and the pan was wired. Yeah. So anyway, let's look at the other one. It's called Superdome, and then we'll we'll have a quick discussion on another very interesting thing I find about Super Bowl spots. Okay. To you, it's a major office complex. To us at Johnson Controls, it's keeping sixty-eight thousand people warm or cool. To you, it's a small office building. To us, it's an updated energy management and maintenance program that pays for itself. To you, it's the Superdome. To us, it's handling one of the biggest computerized lighting jobs ever. We're at work in over 500 cities around the world, creating a better climate for business. Give us a call. All right. I wonder how many takes there were of that shot where... Uh... You know, it went by the, you know, but the guy was landing or whatever, you know, in front of all those people and. Not that many. It wasn't really the balloon. It was just the, the thing on a crane. It was just a basket on a crane. Still. So, you know, it was really easy to do it. Um, there wasn't a lot of real, not really a lot of takes of everything. It all went very quickly. Um, you know, it was, it was a, it was a low budget job actually. You know, so anyway. <clears throat> oh, yeah, low budget in 84, so it was only $600,000 right, probably, exactly, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, <clears throat> this, it, it, this again, being a very unremarkable spot, um, you know, it brings me to another factor about Super Bowl spots. Now, we all have our favorite over the years. My favorite was a spot called Herding Cats. Who's heard of Herding Cats? Oh, yeah. Okay, totally. what was it for? What was the company? Oh, I don't remember. Of course, remember not. nobody remembers. Yeah. It was, this is where we, we start to question the value of a Super Bowl spot. You know, we will put a lot of money into it, but at what point is a, is a company simply paying to entertain us and they don't get any value back? Because we don't remember what the hell the spot was about. It was too, you know, funny or great or whatever. So, you know, in, in essence, those end up being pretty shitty spots if you can't remember what it was for. So what was interesting about these is when they first ran, they scored incredibly high on those marketers tests for recognition and memorableness. And in fact, they scored so high that they also ran them in the 86 and 87 uh, Super Bowls. So unremarkable spot. It got the word across for the client very, very well. And that's kind of it shows you the power of uh, the power of branded balloons. There you go. You know? And we're totally. still talking about it thirty years later. Thirty five. Thirty five. Jesus. What's wrong with hey, you? Hey Tim, kids? real quick, there's a uh, there's a question for you in the chat. How long did it take to do this to do those jobs? Um, I believe we spent about two and a half months doing the roto. Um, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you couldn't see it back either. Yeah, you, right? you paint it was you painted every frame one at a time, you know, by hand. So I think it took about two and a half months of roto. I think we spent maybe two weeks offlining and two weeks onlining um, gotcha. on either end of that roto. Wow. Uh Moore was just asking here in the chat, how many levels of undo did you have on that paint box? Uh one. There you go. One brush stroke. <laughs> you know, you brush stroke, you don't like it, you hit undo, it goes away. Otherwise, but of course, you're only making a mat. You don't like it. You just paint black over the part you painted white. You know? Yeah, true. We were only nice. painting mats on the paint box for this. So. Awesome.
All right, thank you very much, man. Round of applause for Tim Farrell. <laughs> Tim Farrell, a, 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 a tablet elbow survivor. That's right. All right, moving on next to uh, Mark Wellington. Mark has a spot uh, for Wilson football. And um, I know one thing I loved about this, uh, and especially what you had to do, Mark, was you were also on set. So this was this kind of right. speaks to that whole um, that whole you know thing of just the the craziness of, of 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 any TV commercial is palpable. But when it gets elevated to the level of a Super Bowl spot, then all of a sudden, like you know, crank it to a twelve on the stress level, right? Oh yeah, and I wasn't even actually supposed to work on this spot originally. Uh, I got called in at the last minute, two weeks before the Super Bowl. They were going to shoot in Ada, Ohio, which is the Wilson factory. And it was below zero outside when we did this spot. So believe it or not, when you see Russell Wilson outside, you're going to see him freezing to death because he was. Um, <laughs> you get to swoop in and be I, the savior and the fall guy at the same time, which is great. Yeah. And uh, so basically I was called in as a VFX super. And uh, because our company does, or I do DIT occasionally, because we're in the Midwest, we got to do whatever we can do because there's not enough flame work in, in Indiana to keep us afloat. So we do lots of things. Um, and I happen to have a system that I, that had flare on it. So they called me in a friend of mine knew the gaffer and they brought me in on it. CBS sports did so that I could comp live on set basically, um, and show them what it was going to look like. So they made sure they got the shot because there was no bringing Russell back once mm -hmm. he had stuff going on. So, we had him for two hours. We had him for two hours for the comp shots, and then he had about another two hours of shooting a whole bunch of other shots, which you'll see. So we shot him in four hours, but we prepped for two days. So gotcha. on the sh on the shot, you know, we had all the shots set up before he walked in. Um, but yeah, and 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 I was showing him, and I I kept you know I had to be careful because you don't want to talk to a director about hey I can do post and stuff on a shoot if you ever work shoots you get fired. <laughs> so uh, I was very careful, but the producer was very adamant about being uh, wanting to find somebody. They hadn't found anybody to do the stuff yet. And I kept saying, well, and he's like, well, do you do this? And I'm like, yeah, look here. I did it on. So I started pulling the comps on flare. And then uh, by the end of the shoot, the director came up to me and he goes, you know what? Are you available next week? And I said, yep. And he goes, all right, you're hired. My producer will be calling you on Monday. And I had four days to do all the work that they wanted. It started out as one shot became five shots which you'll see it's awesome so look how far we've come right you were on a the set of a super bowl spot they were shooting and had no idea who was going to do the post and tim finished his spot six months before it aired <laughs> Amazing. i finished it a few days before <laughs> and i only did the comp shots that you, you know we'll show you the breakdowns of them but i only worked on five of the shots cool so, and all right and here, i'll tell you about it later okay here it comes Ada, Ohio, home to the Wilson Football Factory. 78 years of rich NFL history lie behind these walls. And since 1941, Wilson has proudly been the name behind every game ball in the National Football League. And behind this door is the man keeping that Wilson tradition alive. Surprised? Why would you be? Because, you know, behind every great Super Bowl moment, there has been a Wilson. And today, it's a Wilson's job to get the game balls from this factory to the field. And this is where it all happened. Welcome, Welcome to the Wilson Football Factory. This is our busiest time of the year. We had to make 228 balls for the biggest game of the season. Oof. Another beauty. Nobody works harder than us Wilson. OK, most of us Wilsons. Quality control is everything. This one needs extra pressure. Now we test every ball to make sure it's game ready. That's right. Nothing leaves the factory without a real Wilson approval. Man, he looks good. Real good. Of course, the Super Bowl is the ultimate competition. But around here, we're pretty competitive as well. <laughs> it's one handsome crew. <laughs> OK, enough of the tour. It's time to take these beauties to Atlanta. Super Bowl 53. Here we come. Seriously, do I have to do everything around here? Next up, the ATL. <laughs> mm. 
Nice. Oh, that's great, man. Thank you. Yeah, I can totally see the pressure of, you know, you only got him for four hours and especially like that giant shot, that wide shot in the factory where you had like oh, yeah. 25 of him, just making sure that they were all in the right place at the right time. And that's always the yeah. goal of like being the onset supervisor, especially for commercials is, is looking out for the gotchas that are going to screw you when you get the material back, you know, and you're in your bay. Yeah, man, I, th th that was fun because we they actually took a piece of plexiglass and put it over the screen and every time and they locked the camera off and every time they drew a little thing around him, but he still crossed access. So I had to go in and clean that stuff up <laughs> so that you didn't see him <laughs> twice in the same spot. It's like, oh, well, that's not good. His I love that. Going I've, I've, yeah. I've done that on set so many times and it's like the greatest old school trick in the world is just like grab a grease pencil and just draw, you know, on the on the monitor there. To make sure you have oh, a shot. You don't want to up. draw on the monitor, you get in trouble. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, well, it's fine. I mean, slip slip, slip, day, slip the did of 20, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> we just you put a piece of plexi. You went up to that DIT and just, and just drew on his monitor. Oh, my God. <laughs> you have a heart attack. So, <laughs> yeah, and it was uh, like the dog at the beginning wasn't even actually supposed to be in the spot. His wife showed up, and I can't remember her name, but she's a famous singer. And I didn't know that. Mrs. Wilson. Because I'm. Uh, yeah, well, she's that's not her name. Uh, but if you look her up, she's a really famous R&B artist. And I didn't know that some girl in a mink coat walks up next to me with this little doggy. And I knew it was his wife. And she's talking to me about what he's doing and all of that. And then I found out she was super famous. And I felt stupid because <laughs> she was just somebody to me on set. I didn't know who she was. <laughs> like, you know that's who awesome. she is? No. So yeah, but um, originally, I was only going to do that 11 Wilson comp and then they, they couldn't figure out, I guess their in-house people uh, were like, Hey, just ask him to do the build the room. That room doesn't exist at all. The, those rooms that you're going to see here in a second. And they just gave me a little graphic they made in Photoshop and then gave me a picture of Wilson's test factory and said, Hey, make it look like this. So that's what I did. So you'll, you can see the comp breakdown yeah. here. Let's take a look. It looks dark on your monitor, but I didn't do the color correction on it anyway. <laughs> but uh, I, I basically they gave it to me in in Airy Raw mm -hmm. in Log C. So I I did all the comps and gave it back to them in Log so they could color it however they wanted. Mm -hmm. So that's great. That's man. a quick break round, Quick breakdown. Nice. Congratulations. Well, thanks. And how long did you say you had to do all the, the posts? Four days. I did all that in four days. That's excellent. Nicely done, man. Thanks. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, someone's asking in the chat, what what year was that? Was that, let's see, three years ago? 19, or uh, 2019, I think, or no, 2018. Gotcha. One of those two, I can look. I don't remember. It was the last time like CBS Super Bowl did 53 the, or something, but I, I, I stopped counting after, after 38, to be honest with you. Two or three years ago. I don't remember. Sorry. I think it was 2018. No, I don't remember. One of those two. It was two or three years ago. Yes. Great job, man. Excellent. Thanks. Excellent. Uh, next up is Sean, Sean Cochran from the vanity. How you doing, man? Hey, yeah, I'm doing great. All right. You've got I'm a spot. Thanks for having me. Oh, of course. Thank you for being here. You've got a spot here uh, called um, uh, for Party. Amazon. You said this was Amazon's first Super Bowl spot? Yeah, Naveen actually uh, reminded me that this was the very first Amazon. Uh, I think it was the first Amazon commercial, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, I might somebody might want to correct me on that, but uh, either maybe Super Bowl commercial or commercial. But so it was a big deal. Oh, sweet. There's a lot of eyes on this thing for sure. Oh, no pressure. Yeah, no pressure, <laughs> yeah. No pressure at all. Guy's got his own fleet of spaceships. All right. Um, let's go ahead and I'll show the spot and then you'll take us through it. Cool. So how much money do you have? Alexa, stop. Marino, you definitely have to stop. How you do that? It's my Amazon Echo. I can stream music, order things, and watch this. Alexa, turn on the lights. Wow. 
Wow. Breaded wings? You're blowing it, bro. Alexa, how many championships has Dan Marino won? Dan Marino has won zero championships. Alexa, how many Oscars has Alec Baldwin won? Alec Baldwin has won zero Alexa, Oscars. stop. Well played, Marino. Shame on you! This man is a national treasure. Jason, it's all right. No, it's not all right. I will sack this man so hard for you. No, you won't. Gentlemen, we have over 100 million people watching us right now. 100 million people? Hey, Alexa, release that new song, Pep Rally, by Missy Elliott. Oh, hey. Awesome. That was it. All right. Uh, what would you say was the biggest challenge, other than the time, the pressure, the stress, and all the eyes on you? All those things, yeah. Well, this was one of those jobs that uh, you started getting calls from set, because originally it was a conform. It was like, <laughs> yeah, you're just going to... Just be a conform, you know, uh, we might put a few things in here, here or there, little things, but nothing you can't handle. And we, I think, had booked, because there was a few other spots as well, we had booked maybe three or four days originally. Mm -hmm. And then the calls from set started coming in where uh, the client, excuse me, the Amazon client wasn't very happy with what production had created for the snack stadium. And uh, and I don't know if you want to go to my by flame or not, because I've got uh, I've got the project open here, actually. Oh, sure. Well, yeah, this sounds like the story of Amazon's first commercial and the vanity's most uh, profitable job of the year. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, all right, cool. Yeah, so, I, you know, like I say, originally it was just to conform. Uh, and then I got the call from set. Hey, uh, client may want to put tickers, you know, on the... Um, snack stadium. So let me just sort of go to that. And, you know, you know what, do you want us to put green on there? And I was like, well, not really, but sure. If you want to put green on, go ahead. And then, so you'll need to create those tickers. Okay. No problem. Sounds good. And then I got the call maybe an hour later saying, actually the client is not very happy with this snack stadium. They actually want a fourth tier on the snack stadium. And, uh, you know, they want to change up a lot of the food. I guess the food was a big deal. And so I was like, okay, uh, he said, so what, what do you need us to shoot? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I mean, you guys are already there. So just shoot it the way you want to shoot it. And I guess we'll deal with it later. And so I started seeing some stills and I'm like, all right, there's different angles on this snack stadium. And you can see where we netted out is a lot different than, you know, what they shot. And so I started seeing the rough cut. I was like, oh man, like I've got to create you know, I had gotten a few more days, but not really that much time. So I've got different angles on this snack stadium, no time to do any CG whatsoever. And I've got moving cameras and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, you know, th there was like thrown out that, well, maybe we'll try doing a matte painting. Okay, well, I need a matte painting that's at different angles though. So, and it's food. I mean, and that has to look good. We've got close-ups, you know, medium close-ups of, of Dan Marino where we're gonna put food, so. Anyway, so I'll, I'll go through uh, the batch here. Um, and so what, I, what we ended up doing was, uh, actually, let me show you this first. I ended up creating a library of food. So this was, these are just my stills playing back. I knew that, uh, you know, the client was going to have lots of opinions on where the food was going and what food was there. And so I, I shot all these different, you know, platters of food that I could then cut out and put into a matte painting. Uh, tons and tons of food. So we just did this in the office really quick, as you can see. And then if we go to the batch, I sort of broke it down where I had, you know, the different levels of food created uh, matte paintings. But because I had the different angles on every single element of food, I could go into each matte painting and I could create the different angles on that matte painting. So it felt like the same thing. So it's just loading up here. So this was basically, you know, a, a map painting that I knew I could then swap out, you know, hey, because then the clients did actually, they wanted to put chicken wings in certain places because Marino's gag was that it's, you know, breaded wings, you're blowing it, bro, and all that, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Lamb chops and a client was very sensitive. Once they realized that we were going to do all this after, very sensitive to what food was going where. So created, uh, you know, all of the various food levels so that 
And again, this will just take a second to load up so that I could project uh, on extended by cubics the uh, matte painting in different layers. Um, and it was all very quick, as you can see, you know, this is, this is sort of the raw build of all the food being projected, you know, and if I go to the working camera, you know, you can kind of see that I've, I've got all this stuff. It's super fast. I had to, I had to rebuild those lights, um, at the top and, uh, and, and it was amazing, actually. Once we got building this, the clients decided, well, you know, let's, let's put the, you know, let's move the, 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 whatever these little kebabs were. We want to move those around. And this map painting changed so many times. And because I had all those different angles, you know, I could go to, let's say, um, you know, this shot here. Once I had the master angle built, then I could just go in and find those same pieces of food and comp them in at the right, at the right size. So, mm -hmm. you know, here's our, our matte painting, you know, for all these shots, uh, they were all basically the same shots of Merino. And so I took all three of these shots, stabilized them and created kind of a master uh, sequence of all three shots that I could slip the matte painting into comp it all together with my, uh, my little graphics, my um, ticker. Mm -hmm. And then it, it, I could change things very, very quickly, which was, it was, again, it was amazing how much they wanted to change it. Sure. And then some fun movie. flame things too, Andy, was like, uh, you know, when I had to do on the TV that they decided to put in, it was like, oh, you can just create something back there. I'm like, okay, well, what do we want to see? Oh, we just want to see some random broadcast graphics. <laughs> okay. So you know, using some very simple like stills of, you know, different pieces, you know, I was able to sort of create a very rudimentary broadcast graphics, you know, using all of flame particles for the confetti and all that stuff and just using uh, uh, displacements. Oh, yeah, so there's no geometry in there or 3D shapes or anything. It's all just displacement map? Yeah, it's all just displacement maps. And again, oh, in, the, in the spirit of being able to change this stuff very quickly. Yeah. You know, because like I said, there's tons of eyes on this thing. It's all this, you know, creative stuff that no one's seen until the last second. And so, of course, they have all kinds of opinions on colors and how fast things are happening. Really? Uh, yeah, it's amazing, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's great. I mean, like this, what this is, this is also like a, in addition to being beautiful and very, uh, the, the, uh, the chat is in love with the batch setup. Oh it's, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> like a case study in, you know, build it with the change in mind, you know, don't back yourself or paint yourself into a corner. And also yeah. like, yeah, you know, you know what, what the, the fact that you were able to shoot all the food at the various angles means that you could, well, first of all, you, you, you knew good, you had lunch covered for the, the day of that um, element shoot clearly, but that you, you know, you, you could pre render still frames and then take advantage of like the real time or the, the, the responsiveness uh, that you're going to need when the changes are probably coming in faster than you can make them, you know? Oh my gosh. Yeah, for sure. And like, uh, you know, I'd always say, uh, you know, like, just like you say, I've been doing this for a long time. I know what the clients like, and it's not really the work that they remember. It's like what working with you is what they remember. And so if you say, uh, you know, even if you created an amazing piece at the end of it, if they found it a difficult experience, like you, you know, you're whining about changes or you said you couldn't do certain things, then that's what they remember. You know, mm -hmm. it, I found anyway. So, you know, I, I try and imagine all of the things that they're going to want to change and engineer those in first straight away. Totally. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's, that's kind of served me pretty well. And then I don't know Andy, if there's, if there's time or not, uh, let me just jump into the, I was just going to go through one more quick thing here. Just uh, yeah, sure. So, um, and the regular kind of flame stuff. You know, the other panic call on set that we got was that this actress here, who uh, is featured in this first shot, and then she's kind of a, a secondary background player later on. You can see her, her right here. Uh, when they originally shot her, they shot her, and let me just stop moving around so you can see. They shot her with these glasses on. So. And she's also got these beads on her, on her body. And I guess they were sort of, uh, I don't know, say mocking, but they were definitely inspired by a certain New York socialite. 
mm -hmm. who dresses this way and found out through the grapevine that she was or her likeness was in the spot didn't want to be associated with the spot and so they kind of turned to me like oh my gosh how can we fix this um you know and i said well what's what's the big problem with this well her beads are a problem and also her glasses are a problem like okay well you know and again like i only had four or five days to do this whole spot and i was already on this all this other nonsense so i said if listen if you could help me out and get me an asset with the glasses at least of that you want and then i could probably comp those in you know like put her in the same light drag her over there and and just kind of if you could just give me something move get her to move her head around a little bit just so i can get some difference in parallax and uh and so that's what they did so let me just show you that quickly here so um and this, was this also of, just shows excellent job security in the future, in case anyone's wondering. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and so the original shot was this. You know, she's got these big sort of signature glasses. And then, uh, you know, she's photographed against, you know, his shirt and everything, right? And then this, this to me is like the basic flame stuff that we always have to deal with, you know? Uh, so just really quickly, um, let's see. Actually, I think it's over here. So then I had her you know, just stand there. And I'm like, I don't know. And the editor was on set for us. And, uh, you know, it's like, I don't know, just get her to stand there and move around and get us some different, some different uh, angles. I kind of retimed her using the time warper just to match what she was doing in the real plate. And then, you know, very simple, simple kind of roto stuff, you know, rotoing her out mm -hmm. and then comping that element back on top. You know, that's great, which was sort of fun. And then removing some of the beads, I guess, the biggest ones that were a problem. And that's uh, great, man. And yeah, just sort of fun, fun flame stuff that, you know, nobody thinks about when you see the spot, but we all know that how much work goes into all these details. Oh, yeah. And you're 100% right. It's all about the experience. You know, you walk away as the savior, as the hero, as the, you know, they, they never want to do anything again without you. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, uh, and to me, that's all about being able to, uh, you know, make the changes that they want, even if they seem crazy to, to you, you know, like, like it's, uh, it's the type of thing where you just don't argue. They want to change it. Hey, no problem. Let's try that. You know, and sometimes they end up changing it back, but it's, it's all about being as flexible as possible. And sometimes you just have to show them that it doesn't work, you know, but if you say no, you know, it's usually, oh, the yeah, you so you have to show them why it, why it's not going to work. Don't tell them. <laughs> that was awesome. Thanks, yeah, man. Cool. Anybody have any other questions for Sean? All right. We're going to switch over now to Andy Brown. Great. I'm really glad I have to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Sean. That's amazing. Oh, cool. Thanks, Andy. Appreciate it, man. All okay. right. You want to um, introduce your your spot, Andy? Yeah, this is a this is a, it's a ten. This was the first Super Bowl spot I ever worked on. It was the first job I ever did in the U.S., and um, it was a bit of a can you please come and help out on this job? Because we had a we had a jogger office in the U.K. and one in New York and uh, one in L.A. and um, or, or personnel changes, and it was like, okay, can you can you come and help out? on this job it's a super bowl spot and I, did, I honestly to be perfectly honest as a brit it's like okay i don't really know what that means but that's fine yeah i know what the super bowl <laughs> is but okay a super bowl spot i don't know what what's important about that <laughs> but um and it was a, it's a it's a pretty straightforward job a uh, uh, spot to be honest it's i think it's funny it's a really nice funny spot and uh, my um, my business partner steve gandolfi at cut and run he cut this brian buckley directed it so there was a nice cool team around it and um i didn't know what i had to do it was already shot it was already had been edited uh, by the time i got into town and um so it was just a, a a classic case of exactly what sean said but not to that extent it's like okay well you're going to get asked to do some stuff and you don't know what that is and they've already shot it so just uh, just crack on so let's uh, let's take a look at it and see all right America, we're in for at least four years of awful hair. <laughs> 
So it's up to you to do your part by making up for it with great hair. And we mean all hair. His hair. Their hair. That baby's hair. That chest hair. That mohair sweater. That dog hair. That back hair. That girl's hair. He hair. Your hair. All hair. Let's make sure these next four years are... It's a ten years. Do your part. Excellent. <laughs> That's great. And, and I think what I what I really liked about it was it it really introduced me to the uh, the the kind of an an American style of of ad, which is something you know we like to have humor in uh, in ads back you know worldwide as well i'm sure but but this was it really stood out to me as something that different i don't think would have run in the uk you know it was obviously taking the mickey out of trump and his hair because that was the it was the year of his election <laughs> and a <laughs> very 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 timely and um the the story is that the guy who owns the company just went well i want to make something that takes the takes the mickey out of him and get that on and i've got the money to do it so i'm going to make this super bowl ad so i just uh and and uh in the same way as uh, as everybody's been saying it's all about the the time i mean the edit changed and changed and changed and changed very regularly because it's not there isn't any because there isn't you know any continuity in anything at all it's just shot after shot after shot to go with the uh, to go with the voiceover so there was no reason why any shots couldn't go in any any direction um and all the things we had to do really were just doing i think what you were saying andy it's uh it's just managing everything really uh being on top of the okay that shot is now eight frames longer or this shot has gone already or the shot the little shot of the of the little baby with the hairdryer blowing its hair that was just taken off youtube so they didn't know whether they were going to get, be able to license that <laughs> until the day of delivery so that was that was an interesting so the edit changed again on day of delivery because they finally got hold of the person whose baby that was and paid them whatever they wanted for it to go in so that was cool That's um, amazing <laughs> the, the the other things that we did were mainly enhancements as far as um as far as the hair goes so the dude with the backpack shaved into his back i mean all of those were done for real that was real it was really done but it wasn't quite enough you couldn't really see it quite enough so we had to go in and add some more hair color correct <laughs> it a little bit pale his skin down a little bit and then darken up the darken up the uh, the rucksack back hair as well the backpack so that was Amazing. fun and and we had the uh we had the director just come and literally stand right next to me. He just, he was a very busy man, didn't want to, he just went, can you do this? I was like, yeah, sure, but I'm coming over now. So it was just a a, a classic uh, being in the room flame artist job where it's like, okay, right, well, I got to do this right now it, while he while he stands over me and says, yeah, that's fine, great, good job, goodbye. So that was really, uh, <laughs> that was really fun. Uh, and then we also replaced uh, a lot of the skies. So the opening shot, we put some put some sky in there to get that uh, get that bit of movement. That was the old um, the, the the classic classic. It's only a still, in fact, that I found. And again, it wasn't my flame, so I just found some stills in the library of uh, stills we could use that someone had shot. So it was like, okay, great, yeah, this is fine. This is our material. So that was a still with a with a um, uh, just a bicubic where you move the front of it more than the back oh, yeah, of it totally. so that so you get that whole kind of it feels like it's a bit more perspective -y of it moving through oh that's great there you go. so to, a little cheat on that one and then there's another shot a little bit further on where there's a sky in the background where the guy i think it's after this guy where again we wanted to yeah this one it was that was yes we need to replace the sky in this one but there was literally nothing to track to that everything's moving there's nothing in the sky and i honestly think i just put two points in in the end and went okay i think there's one at the start <laughs> one at the end does that look okay and uh you know managed to get a bit of a kind of some kind of key off his off his uh off his hair it works and it does work that's what that's all that counts ultimately <laughs> in all of this isn't it? it does it work totally. um but yeah, it was fun. It was really good fun. And I, I got uh, the, I can't remember who it was. Maybe it was the PR company or 
someone like that, they were doing a viewing thing, a Super Bowl thing. So I, again, this was my first experience of even seeing a Super Bowl live. So I went to um, some bar somewhere in Hollywood and they had like a sports bar. So there were about, I don't know, 50 massive TV screens <laughs> showing the whole thing all the time. And uh, and then the spot came up, which was a really amazing experience to see it there a lot among all the people who'd been involved in it one way or another. So it was, uh, it was great. It was really, really good. I really enjoyed the process. And I'm, now I've got just finished another one that goes out uh this uh this year as well so i'm looking forward to seeing that as well for a, di- a different different company but same kind of same kind of thing of just a relatively simple straightforward series of shots which you then go okay we've got to do this and this and this but it was it was fun it was fun again and nice to nice to play a small part in something that's great that's awesome man thank congratulations you. thank you and thank you for sharing are you allowed to uh to say or what what the spot is so we can keep an eye out for it it's in the first quarter it's a space theme thing so you'll see you'll see that i think that's all oh, cool. i'm supposed to say uh jeff kyle and i have a, a an at&t spot that's lord of the rings themed um it's uh it's regional so like it, it it's only where they offer whatever service they're advertising so like i, I don't think it's going to be in the new york market but definitely everybody keep an eye out for it yeah, anyone and at I, home in the chat, if you're if you're working on one, share and we'll uh we'll, so we can keep an eye out for you. Hey, Tim, are you allowed to say what yours was? Um, it's for an insurance company, and it's based on the game Operation, and uh, <laughs> it may be regional or not. I don't know. They don't tell me these things. <clears throat> but uh, again simple not you know it was just a few of us worked on it and everybody did a really really nice job all the way through from mm-hmm. production to you know me putting the spit and polish on it and sending it out the door <clears throat> oh awesome cool 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 all right you know we have uh we have a couple of minutes left and so uh, oh renee says that she has uh she has one in the third quarter it's garden themed all right I'll keep an eye out for that <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, we have a couple of minutes, so I, I was going to share one one other thing. Um, everybody remembers the the Janet Jackson Super Bowl year. I'm I'm sure um, that was 17 years ago. I know because my daughter was um, months old at that time. But uh, this was during my stint in broadcast TV, and I worked actually worked that game. So uh, where I was working at, we designed. We, we did the redesign for the NFL on CBS that year. So you're saying, was, Andy, that it wasn't your fault? Oh, I haven't gotten there yet, Randy. No, no, no. I'm building. I'm building to a, a – there's a, it's a thing. And uh, we built all the graphics. And this is back in the day. I mean, there were no real-time graphics back then. I mean, this is 2000 – must be 2004, like January, January of 2004. And uh, it was the first year the game was broadcast in HD, but none of our graphics were in HD because they didn't have any systems that could handle it. It was all SD anamorphic, <laughs> right? <laughs> that we did, um, but we had to do ahead of time, and this was for the whole season too. We had to do every possible combination of graphics you could think of. So, in addition to like all the lower thirds and all the coaches' corner and all the instant replay split screens and three way three ups and everything, we had to do them for every team. So it was all the teams plus the NFL, the AFC, the NFC, and the NFL on CBS. So it was just like. 1500 deliverables or something all with mats and fills and then we had an online room in this facility uh that was massive i mean from back in the day and they set it up as like uh, a truck it was it was all the equipment that was going to be in a truck that they'd send to a stadium and that's how they would test out they would do it they would run a game essentially with game footage uh but the highlight was i got to go to houston for the game um we did as much as we could before the the show before the super bowl and then for the last week we were in houston yes tim it was broadway video absolutely right um what gave it away uh let me show you here i have some pictures from the day and these were taken with a i believe they called it a point and shoot camera at the time but uh i flew down to to houston with uh, our creative director a guy named jamie and this was a flame artist named claudia she she passed away a few years ago uh but she was incredible uh, an incredible designer. And, uh, we took off from LaGuardia. So, you know, we got this view of Manhattan and everything was frozen. Right. 
uh, but we we got there and then we split up into two different teams. Claudia and uh, one of our editors went to a truck at the stadium, the broadcast center. I don't know if anybody remembers Renee from Autodesk here. He was uh, he was the technician from Autodesk that they sent down to to Houston with us. But uh, she was in a truck um, on on like on site at the stadium working on, I think it was, um, this was the first year that they showed you little icons at the bottom of the starting lineups. You know, everybody was shot on green screen and, uh, and, and, and the chaos was when one of those people changed and they had to find, you know, the digibeta that, that was shot, that, the, that they shot all the players on ahead of time. But Claudia was on, on, uh, at the stadium. I was at a video facility down the street, like maybe a half a mile down the street um, where they set me up with, let's see, that was our editor, and then, oh, well, I'm in here somewhere, hold on, there we go, yeah, I was in this fancy room, right, I still made that face, even all those years ago, uh, but we were doing, I was doing like the end of quarter summaries, and the the halftime show sponsors, you know, brought to you by, blah, and those, of course, kept changing, uh, I had this really fancy setup, uh, they brought this whole rack for you know my machine and ended up being this octane up top and then the stone at the bottom. So it was really hot and really loud in that room. Uh, fun fact, when I got to this facility, they asked me, um, they asked me back in the day, I mean, there, there are definitely enough of us here who remember videotape and videotape had to be like christened, like you had to lay down black and time code on it, right? Um, we all had different terms for that. Sometimes it was it was blackening the tape or formatting the tape or whatever. But uh, down in, I, I get to this facility and somebody comes up to me and asks me, like right when I get there, he knocks on the door and says, hey, do you know where I can get some crystal around here? And I was like, shit, man, I just, I mean, I just got here, you know, I, I and I'm from out of town, but, you know, let me know, you know, when you find a guy, you know, here's my number. But that was their term for blacking tape you know, because of the oscillating crystal, like quartz crystal that generated like time code or something. But that was that was my intro. Uh, but we were there for a week prepping everything. And uh, one day we got to go on the field like before the game started, you know, I think I, I can't remember if it was game day, but we definitely got to go on the field. Um, you know, I, I, I think I only threw that shirt out last week. But uh, you know, one of the highlight we worked with a, 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 a CBS producer every week, and every week would ask him if I could meet Armin Katayan, who was like my favorite of the NFL on CBS, like sideline guys. And every week he'd say, "You're fucking weird, Andy. All right, stop it." So we're out here on the field, and who is is shooting some package right there? There he is, man. Right. So I got my dream came true with Armin, and then um, uh, my wife's family is from uh, Massachusetts, so you know I got to go to the Patriots end zone and. All that kind of stuff. I got a great like NFL and CBS Super Bowl commemorative hat that uh, ended up at the bottom of uh, Splash Mountain and Disney World, but that's a different story. But uh, the day of the game, you know, we had nothing to do. All our graphics were done, so we were just bouncing around around the the trucks, the broadcast center, and this was like the command center here, um, where every camera and disc recorder and everything fed in. Um, the astronauts were going to fly on the next space shuttle mission. This is after the Columbia. Uh, blew up on the way home or um, were there getting tours and everything because it was Houston. So we got, got to see them. Uh, I wasn't, I was on the field for the halftime show and, you know, we saw Aerosmith's drum kit and everything. I uh, got to meet some great fans, you know, uh, so not, nothing's really changed here, but uh, yeah, it was great. We got to see them set everything up for the halftime show. And, and again, I was there, uh, we couldn't see what happened. Uh, uh, until afterwards when, you know, we saw like an instant replay of it. Uh, and then, you know, we're able to see history being made. And then we were on a chartered flight coming home and I, I got to sit uh, three seats behind Phil Sims and that's Phil Sims head. So if you're a, a New a York chartered Giants fan, flight, Andy, a chartered flight, what were you guys charging back then? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it wasn't as lucrative as let's say when Tim was working on his spot, but, uh, there was definitely money to be made. I can tell you, but that's my little story there of uh, of working the Super Bowl one year, and it was absolutely awesome. I'm so happy that I, I had that opportunity. Um, yeah. So oh, cool. we have all those photos, Andy. That's amazing. Oh, it's great. And uh, they every now and then, like they pop up, you know, as memories uh, on the phone. And uh, 
Yeah, there was, there was, we went, I remember hanging out at one point in one truck that was the stats truck, you know, and it was filled with like a dozen 20 year old football fanatics and they would come up with stats, you know, and like one of them would like be, they, and they don't have books. There was no internet to look things up. They all have books. And one of them was just like, you know, it's, uh, there's five minutes left in the second quarter. And uh, if they kick a field goal, uh, from uh, beyond the 40 yard line, it'll only be the third time in the history of the Super Bowl that that will have been attempted by a left footed kicker or you know, some shit, whatever. And they would type up a lower third and send it over to the control room and like freeze. They would just be like, and they'd wait for like, you know, Greg Gumble or whatever to go, you know, Dave, if they kick a field goal, and these kids would freak out because their thing got on the Super Bowl, you know, it was great. It was just a lot of just awesome energy and. It was really a great experience. So, thanks, man. Uh, let's uh, speaking of an awesome experience. Let's give away some uh, some Logic TV masks here. Hold on. Oh wait, there we go. That's better. Thank you very much. Okay. Here we go. It's prize time. Oh, hold on. It's prize time on Logic.tv. I have here in one of these many browser windows, in one of these many browser windows, the random name picker. Uh, we only have a few people here who have not previously won, won a mask, but we'll see what happens here. This is brought to you by uh, um, the University of Albany. Well, I guess if you want to fly drones, uh, definitely apply to the University of Albany. All right, here we go. Look at that. That's JavaScript for you there, guys. Amazing. Oh, let's hear it for Shiver. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. Let's do one more, okay? Round and round they go. Where it stops, nobody knows. And Philippe. All right, congratulations, man. Yes, you two have both won a Logic.tv mask, courtesy of our friends at Cynesis. Be fashionable and stay safe with a mask from uh, Logic.tv and Cynesis. Thank you very much. All right, let's turn off the music. And uh, let's take a look at what we've got coming up on Logic Live in two weeks. In fact, I'm just going to tell it to you. I don't even have to show you the slide. Uh, next week, we are not going to do a Logic Live because even I'm not stupid enough to have one on Valentine's Day. Thank you very much. And uh, But... Two weeks from today, our friend Sean Cochran from The Vanity is going to be back to uh, take us through a couple of spots that they've done. We're really looking forward to that. Sean, do you want to tease that and, and uh, tell the folks at home what it is oh, you're going to be showing? Sure, sure. Yeah, we. I think this is going to be a WestJet, which is a Canadian airline, uh, and the whole idea behind the spot, 60-second spot. Actually, it might have been a 90-second. I actually have to relook at it. But uh, uh, the airline doesn't treat people like cattle. And so when this thing came in, it was like, we want everybody in the airport to be, to be cattle. So there's cows at the, at the baggage claim. There's cows at the desks buying tickets. There's cows waiting in line, giant wide shots and uh, sort of, and lots of close ups as well. And so they kind of said, how do we do this? We worked with the director, Mark Siebert, great guy we work with all the time. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll break that down uh, in a couple of weeks. Awesome. Looking forward to it. All right, let's, uh, before, you know, before I go into the rest of the slides, um, I just want to thank all of you guys for being here today and for sharing the stories and, uh, and sharing the work. That's what this is all about is kind of sharing and, uh, and building that community. So round of applause for Tim and Andy and Sean and Mark. Thank you very much guys. All right. So please, uh, if you haven't signed up for the forum, head on over to forum.logic.tv. Uh, the forum is growing beyond our, our wildest dreams and we, we couldn't be happier. Uh, we have a Discord server that we've just turned on recently. And so if you download Discord, uh, there's uh, every now and then there'll be something on there. There'll be uh, some live chatter. And uh, Randy has also uh, incorporated uh, a few things on there where it, you know, it kind of uh, builds a, a catalog of, of all the posts that have uh, happened on the forum. So there's always a place to track what's going on. 
This episode will be available on Logic.tv shortly, uh, as well as all the previous episodes of Logic Live and a bunch of other great content. So be sure to check that out. On Tuesday, um, we're going to re re uh, release a new episode of the podcast. Uh, the other day, uh, Randy, Brian, uh, Amanda, and Andy Dill and I, we sat down uh, in our respective homes and recorded a little podcast about RenderDome and what it was like. And uh, so if you had a chance to watch that and you want to hear a little bit about the, the behind the scenes and, and what went on to bring that thing to life, definitely subscribe to the Logic Podcast in your podcatching app of choice. And again, that'll be on Tuesday. If you haven't already, uh, please go ahead and uh, Randy, what's the term uh, for uh, subscribing that the kids are using these days? Subscribe and smash that like button, Andy. Yes, yeah, smash that like button, please. Uh, I'm going to make sure to shout that from the rooftops. Thank you very much. Uh, of course, patreon.com .logic, um, patreon slash logic TV to, uh, to support all the fun that we're doing here. And if you are in the market for any plugins from Boris FX, please be sure to use the uh, discount code logic-15 at checkout to save 15%. And thank you, of course, to our friends at cynicist.io. That's going to do it for Logic Live this week. Thank you very much, everybody, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>